Hello, welcome back. My name is Lemony, happy to have you here. I currently have two problems with my bookshelves. One, there's way too many books. They're all stacked on top of each other and there's no space for new ones. The second thing is that I recently bought a second monitor. I want to say to improve my workflow, but to be honest, it's just because I want to be able to play the Nintendo Switch on a big screen. But because I live in like a tiny student space, my desk is in front of my bookshelves. So the new monitor is going to obscure some of the shelves, making them inaccessible. So I need to move books away from those shelves, but also the other shelves are already too crowded. So I think you can see my problem here. Hence this video, which is going to be an unhaul to just get rid of books that I no longer need and a bookshelf reorganization. Hello, these are my bookshelves. Um, I'm currently sitting on top of my desk. So today I want to have a little unhaul. I need to seriously get rid of some of these books to make some more space. And I want to get it done today because tomorrow I'm going to a book swap, which is kind of like a little organized thing with a bunch of like bookish friends where we all take books that we no longer, we're no longer interested in, books that we want to unhaul, uh, and then we swap between, you know, maybe other people would like to have those books. Great way to get free books. So I'm going to decide which books I want to get rid of and then also decide, you know, if I'm gonna sell them, if I'm gonna bring them to the thrift store or to the book swap event. Lots of decisions to be made. I have a really, really bad time unhauling books because even if I didn't like a book, I am very sentimental about it. Like I get very attached to books just because every time I hold it in my hand, I have like the memories of reading that book and those can be very positive even if I felt so-so about the book. I think my main goal is that I'm going to have to get rid of the idea that I should not unhaul books that are gifts. Like I have a tendency to hold on to books that were gifted to me because I'm like, well, they were a gift even if I'm no longer that interested in them. I have a plan, I don't know if it's a good idea, but I'm gonna do it the Marie Kondo way and that is take everything out. Instead of going through these books and deciding which ones I want to take out to unhaul, I'm gonna take everything out and then decide what to put back. And then the books that I don't put back, I know I need to unhaul those. Okay, so it's basically the plan is make a huge mess of my room. I sense I've made a mistake of sorts. We're just gonna keep, we're just gonna keep going with it. I know I'm going to keep my non-fiction books because I have no desire to get rid of any of these. Same thing goes for my little corner of classic literature. I also have no desire to get rid of any of those. I already know that I just like to collect those. But everything else, we're taking it out. Do I need to keep these Christmas cards from last year? No, I don't. This is a candle that I think I got, also I got this for Christmas. And I, it's completely new, like I haven't even burned it yet. <laughs> You gotta admit, it's kind of cozy. <laughs> I didn't really think this through, how I was gonna do this. I'm gonna organize them again by genre <laughs> for the books that I want to put back. Okay, the first one that I'm coming across is The Midnight Lie by Marie Rutkowski. This was also a gift and I was very happy with it because I thought I was really gonna love it, but I ended up not being able to finish it, to be honest but I know it's a good book. So actually, no, I think I'm gonna do the sensible thing and say this is a pretty good book. It just wasn't for me at the time that I was reading it. So there's probably someone else who would really, really enjoy this. So I will put this here or something. Oh, this A Wrinkle in Time is a book that I actually received at a book swap. And I read this for a video where I was going to read all of Susan Collins's favorite books. Um, and I enjoyed it, but you know, maybe this is one of those things where it all needs to come full circle and I 
read it and bring it back again to another book swap. It's such a pretty cover though. I'm never gonna finish this series anyway, so. An Ember in the Ashes. This was good, but I don't have any very strong feelings about it. But I do... <laughs> I'm gonna put this on the maybe pile. Whoa, this book really got dirty. What did I do with this? This Savage Song is a golden oldie, and I remember absolutely loving it, but I never read the second book. And to be honest, I'm not really interested in that anymore. But I kind of want to keep it because... I love V.E. Schwab and I love this book, but also I don't really have any strong feelings about it anymore. <laughs> okay, maybe pile again. These luckily are all books that I loved. Sometimes a part of me is just like, I'm just gonna get rid of every single book I didn't give like four or five stars, you know, and I only have like two shelves of books left. Okay, probably like four shelves of book left and all the other books can just go to people who would love to read them. And on the other hand, I'm like, no, but I want to have, you know, like a beautiful library with just like shelves full of books. I love the way that it looks and I love the way that you can just grab every single book on there and it has like a little memory attached to it. And those, those are the two wolves inside of me constantly battling each other. No, I cannot get rid of this book. I cannot. I cannot. Oh, this one's easy. Yeah. This is Neuromancer, which I... <laughs> is this a bug? Oh. Okay, I used this to squash a bug, apparently. I read this because I really wanted to read a cyberpunk novel because I love cyberpunk movies. This was way too contrived for me. It's just not my vibe. It was all action, no characters not my thing. For a long time I wanted to keep this because it's you know like a sci-fi classic so it's nice to have on the shelves I guess. It's a little embarrassing how many books I want to keep just because they're like a classic and it looks cool when they're on my shelves and people will see it and be like wow she's so well read. But I didn't even enjoy this so you know don't want to raise false expectations. I think I'm gonna get rid of this. Yeah I'll get rid of this. Le Guin. I will not get rid of you. Oh, this one. This is the watchmaker of Filigree Street, which is kind of speculative fiction in the 19th century, I think. Yeah. I also feel like this is the kind of book where I'm like, I enjoyed it, but I have no strong feelings about it. So I think there will be a lot of other people who would really enjoy this. And obviously I will never get rid of the Broken Earth trilogy. <laughs> it's going on the fantasy pile. That is getting bigger and bigger. Let me get it out of the way a bit. Um, okay, maybe we should go through my unread books. I have a tendency to always hold on to books that I have not read yet because I'm like, well, the potential, you know, maybe I'll love them. But sometimes you just gotta admit that you're never gonna read a book and you need to just get rid of it. Uh, but most of the books on my TBR, I've gotten pretty recently. Yeah, no, I definitely wanna read all of these. Oh. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that Night Film has been... Oh, when I'm, when I'm going through these pages, I'm like, oh man, this looks so cool. I really should read it, you know, with all these mixed media newspaper articles in it. But I know I will never read it. I know I will never read it. And the reason I know that is because it's been on my shelf for five years now, I think. <laughs> There is gonna be someone that would love to read this book and would love thrillers and who's gonna be absolutely enthralled by this story and now it's just wasting away on my shelf. So it's time to go. Fable. This is a beautiful fairy loot edition. Um, but I'm gonna be honest, I'm not really interested in this story. I once read like the first chapter and it just did not grab my attention. It does have pirates though. Let's just generally take a look at my fairy loot editions. Star Daughter, Kingdom of the Wicked, and Fable. And I'm very grateful for receiving these books. It was during COVID and everything was a bit weird, uh, but I was doing YouTube and having a really great time. And I was a fairy loot representative at that time. So I have very, very fond memories of these books. The problem is just that I didn't enjoy these two. And this one I haven't even read yet because I don't think I'm gonna like it. I don't think I'm going to read this. There are so many other books that I prefer to get to first. Stardar, this one, so here, this is what I mean. I did not enjoy this book. It was a slog to get through, but when I hold this in my hands, I have such specific memories of 
I think, yeah, my first fairy loot box. And I think it was like late autumn and it was dark outside. I was going to the forest to walk around and listen to this book. And I think I also used like a bath bomb that was in the fairy loot box. And then I read this book in the bath and it was so nice. Oh, and I think about that when I hold this. So that's why I don't want to get rid of it. I didn't enjoy the story, but I do love the memory that it holds. Because then we have A Kingdom of the Wicked, which I feel like I'm gonna have to get rid of because I know there are so many people who love this book and there are so many people that are looking for this edition. So it almost feels selfish to just hold on to it, even though I have no feelings about it. Maybe these two fairy loots I'll try to sell them because I feel like if I put them in a thrift store, it's probably gonna end up with someone who might be interested in it, but not super. Whereas I know that there are people who are actively searching for these and would really, really want these. So I think I've seen people like selling these for like a hundred dollars, which is insane to me. That's just insane to me. So I think I'll sell them for a reasonable price so that they'll end up with people who really want them. Or I can put them on the maybe pile. No, no. We have to make decisions. I'll put this one on the maybe pile because I really didn't like it, but memories. I'm just sentimental when it comes to items. <laughs> um, my battery died. <laughs> In the meantime, I already put back a bunch of books I know I want to keep. Next up we have here the Atlas 6 and I still have like an original copy of from when it was still self-published even though now it's like traditionally published it looks like this now there's a sequel coming pretty sure it's not going to be published in an edition like this so it's not going to fit if i read the sequel but i do not want to get rid of this original copy because i'm pretty sure they don't sell these anymore so i definitely want to hold on to it especially because this has also the original artwork in it and i love this art style so definitely keeping this. If there are some books that I wish I could read for the first time again, it is the books by Naomi Novak, like her fairy tale books. So Uprooted and Spinning Silver. I love these stories. If you have any recommendations for atmospheric, naturey, fairy tale-esque fantasy books with like a dark twist to it, please recommend them to me because I want to read more like these books by Naomi Novak and unfortunately Naomi Novak herself isn't really writing these anymore because I bought her other book her current ongoing series which is the Scholomans series A Deadly Education being the first one and I really didn't vibe with this at all this is just not my thing it's very satirical I felt like the plot of this book really went nowhere there was no sense of urgency or any reason why I should care about anything and just the whole kind of funny vibe of the book it just it really wasn't for me uh, so i'm definitely gonna get rid of this one because i know for sure there's gonna be someone else who would really want to read this i forgot to go through the rest of my tbr these are books these aren't even mine <laughs> i lent these from friends so i should get to these yeah i think the rest of my tbr i want to keep then we have this one i find very difficult so i have a harry potter box set which was a gift for when i turned 20 you guys may know I haven't read Harry Potter yet. Uh, I've only read the first book. And I did grow up with the movies, but I just never really read the books. And I'm going to be honest, and I know people always ask me like, please read these books, please read these books. But I find myself only wanting to read these because I feel like I'm supposed to, not because I'm actually interested in reading them. And I totally understand why everyone wants me to read them. I understand that a lot of people love these because it's just so nostalgic and they grew up in it. But the stories are not nostalgic to me. I didn't grow up on these stories. If I'm going to read this now, it's just not going to hit the same as it is for everyone else. I'm kind of just not really interested in it. <laughs> and it really doesn't help that I just really don't like JK Rowling and her opinions. I know there is something like separating the art from the artist, but I know that when I talk about books on my channel, it's gonna cause people to buy those books and read those books. And I also know that JK Rowling literally puts her money towards organizations that are a bit transphobic. So I personally don't wanna talk about these books on my channel. That's, I think, the, kind of the executive decision that I've made. The question is just, do I wanna keep these books or do I get rid of them? Because again, they were gifts and it's a really beautiful gift. I'll put them on maybe. 
for now. Then uh, let's go through some more contemporary stories. Ooh, my sister Rosa. I got this from Michelle. This is one of her favorite books. We both bought like our favorite books for the other person and i did enjoy it but i didn't absolutely love it again thrillers just aren't really my thing i kind of feel bad if i get rid of this because it was a gift and i know that it's michelle's favorite book but i just don't really have very strong feelings about it and again i know that i could give this to someone who would love this someone who's really into these kind of psychological thrillers would probably have a great time reading this book i think i just need to I need to do it, yeah. Okay, same with the next book. We have Mrs. Death, Mrs. Death. I enjoyed this book. Okay. I definitely enjoyed this, but that's the thing. I feel like if I love a book, obviously it sticks with you. And if you really don't like a book, it also sticks with you. But then there are those books that you just enjoyed. Like they were good, you would recommend them to people. But that's it, and those are the kind of books that I feel the least strong about and kind of disappear in my memory the quickest. And I have this with this one as well. It's a beautiful cover though. Look at that. I really like design like this. Okay, no, I just need to be, <laughs> I need to be stern with myself. I don't have any particular feelings around this book. Oh man, when I see the price tag on the back, it <laughs> makes me want to keep the book. No, that's a sunk cost fallacy. Doesn't matter. I read this book, I enjoyed this, someone else is gonna be a lot happier with it. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, it's so hard. Then there are some other books that I liked about an equal amount. I just have more memories attached to them and that's why I want to keep them. Obviously I'm keeping these violent delights. Oh, one of my favorites this year. We still have to go through this pile, but first let's go through the contemporary pile. All my romance books are staying. I've been pretty good at only buying romance books that I enjoy because romance books are like a huge hit or miss for me. Uh, and there are a lot of romance books that I really don't like. It's just that those happen to be the books I haven't bought. Yeah, we can keep these as well. Sally Remy is staying. Obviously Bunny is staying. Basically all of the books where I have tabs in, I'm keeping because if I have tabs in them, it means I had particular thoughts that I wanted to tab or annotate. And that's usually a good sign that I should not get rid of it. I am, however, going to get rid of Ghost Wall by Sarah Moss. This was kind of an impulse TikTok buy. It just wasn't for me at all. <laughs> it's just not my kind of story. So we're getting rid of it. Okay, last we have a bunch of fantasy to go through as well. Obviously, Night Circus stays. Ooh. This is another one of those books that I kept because of the sunk cost fallacy because I spent a lot of money on this because this is beautifully illustrated. And that's why I also kind of wanted to keep it because, let me see if I can find an example. I really like the illustrations in this edition of Neverwhere, but I just really did not like this book. And I know there are people that are really gonna love this. I think I'll also sell this. Oh man, oh man. <laughs> This is a perfect example of a book that the moment I hold it in my hands and look at it, it just transports me back in time. I think I read this the last summer of secondary school. So right after I graduated that summer between secondary school and university. And oh man, life was so simple back then. I read this and it was... I loved it so much. I know this isn't a very good book, but I breezed through it. I was so blown away by everything in this story. I had so much fun. Oh, I can never get rid of this. Too many good memories. Um, this one, oh, this is the monstrous graphic novel volume two. I have volume one at my parents' house, so I should probably take this back to my parents' house. What pile does that? I'm really excited for the movie that's gonna come out from this one next year. Gonna go back into my Hunger Games phase. Ew. This is when I did really weird annotation. Look at how much they're sticking out. <laughs> I think this is the first book I ever annotated, so. I think that's enough reason to keep it, right? Yeah, we're just keeping all these books. We're keeping them all. <laughs> I don't want to get rid of any of these. Okay, this one's actually easy. So you guys know that I love To Kill a Kingdom by Alexander Christo. I started her other series, Into the Crooked Place, DNF'd it because it was very formularic, 
very just soulless. It felt like a soulless recreation of Six of Crows. Um, so I'm gonna get rid of this. I, if I look at myself, I just wanna see this book and then I don't wanna see this book that I didn't like next to it, you know? Okay, you'll see me again when I actually have time to clean my shelf and reorganize all these books back into the shelves. These books I'm gonna take with me to the book swap or bring to a thrift store or something like that. Feels good. Okay, I need to clean up this mess. See you soon. Hello, it's a few days later and I wanted to take a quick sort through all of my bookmarks. I keep all of my bookmarks in this very cute group mug. Look how cute he is. <laughs> but it's definitely a little bit too much as in I never really know what to reach for <laughs> when I'm reaching for a bookmark. Um, so I want to keep it a little minimal. Oh, I have this. See, this is what I mean. Like I have really nice ones that I never reach for because I just don't know that I have them <laughs> because I always just grab a random paper one. I think a lot of the bookmarks that I have are like promotional material and they're really cute, but I don't really have a strong connection to them as I have to all the other ones. Oh my gosh, these were my original ones. <gasps> this is the original drawing. And then this is the bookmark that I made from it. This is still one of my favorite ones that I've made. More promotional stuff. Look at this. <laughs> Look at how many. <laughs> Look at how many I have. I'm of course keeping the ones that I have from Etsy stores. I have this magnetic one. You can like clip around the page that you're on, which is super cute, but I never use it because it's kind of heavy. So it really hangs on the page. So I should probably maybe, not sure what to do with this. I can, I think I can bring this to a thrift store. And then this one, this is one that you hang over the binding like this. Cute, huh? Oh, I need to use this more often. Okay, that's still a lot. <laughs> But I also got rid of a bunch, so it cleans up nicely. I am loving this. Look at how cute. <gasps> Amazing. Such a cute space. And I got a little Avatar The Last Airbender background. Oh, cute. But now uh, the bookshelf reorganization problem begins. <laughs> because as you can see, because of this screen, the entire shelf behind it becomes inaccessible to me and part of this shelf as well. So I need to somehow clean out those shelves and make them very empty and then put all the stuff that's there somewhere else but i also need to fit my books so it's going to be kind of a puzzle i am going to of course switch out this random box for like an actual monitor standard where i can put like the basic stationary stuff that i will need it is decluttering day time to turn this into something that's actually useful let me just go over the plans that i have so far <laughs> i think i'm gonna clean everything first just put a rag over everything then yeah I think the first thing that I want to do is <laughs> you can see that this little drawer thing is kind of inaccessible now because of the monitor and this is kind of yeah it's just where I keep my sunglasses my perfumes this is where I have a bunch of my like special makeup and this is where I keep like batteries and manuals uh, so I don't access it very often but I do want to be able to reach it especially for my sunglasses um, so I think I'm gonna move this thing over here. So the classic books are gonna go somewhere else. So then it can kind of turn into this having all of my practical stuff. So the drawer here, here I have all my stationery, here I have a little basket with all my shower stuff and makeup remover and such. And then I think <laughs> right behind there, you can't really see it right now, um, I have my art supplies, which I don't reach for super often, unfortunately, <laughs> but this is very unreachable right now. So I think I want to put that all the way 
on the bottom drawer, which right now is just cables, um, but I think I can make space for that. So then that shelf is also cleared up a little bit. So first cleaning and kind of moving things around. And then we can see where the books will fit. It's time for the fun part now, and that is getting all my books back in here. My first little life hack, no life hack, my first strategy for making sure all those piles of books are gonna somehow fit into here again. My first strategy is that I think I wanna put more books here on top. Uh, you may have already seen, I have my Folk of the Air box set up there as well. It's this beautiful Beauty and the Beast edition, um, but I think I have some more books that I don't want to reach for like super quickly or that look really pretty um, that I want to put up there. I think it always looks really nice when people use the top shelf to just put like pretty books or more like coffee table books. So for example, I have this beautiful edition of all the works from Oscar Wilde that I would love to put up there. Like in the in my bookcase you can only see the spine, which is also really pretty, but the box itself is also beautiful, so I think I can also put that up there. Um, and then some more like coffee table non-fiction books. I have The Universe by Stephen Hawking. The, this is Dutch, but it says the origin of almost everything. And here I have graphic design, the new basics, which I bought on a whim because I thought I could be a graphic designer. <laughs> I am not a graphic designer. <laughs> I think I'm gonna try to put these up top and ow! Whoa, I smashed my finger with these books. <laughs> anyway, I think I'm gonna try to put these on top. See? A few centimeters of more space. <laughs> that looks cute. We've got my super pretty editions together, my only box set, and then the three non-fiction books stacked on top of each other. I think this looks really nice. Next up, I think I wanna put my romance books next to my classics, just to frustrate the literature purists. I think I'm gonna try to use this shelf for all of my unread books so that every time I'm sitting at my desk because the monitor is gonna be here, I'm reminded that I should be reading these books. Oh. I really thought that it would take up the whole shelf, but it doesn't. That's nice. Actually, it fits perfectly. <laughs> I moved them over to here because it perfectly fits into this nook. This is great. And also, because it fits so perfectly, it'll remind me that I should not be buying more books because I have enough, exactly enough, that it'll fit here. And now I'm going to try to move around the rest of these stacks and see where they fit. Okay, hey, now the only thing that's left to do is put on the little shelf decorations. Most of my shelf decorations have a functional purpose and I usually just use them as book stands because I'm pretty surprised with how much space I have left. But obviously this is, gonna, this is just gonna fall over. So I use my bookshelf decorations to keep them from falling over. I just put all that I have here on my bed. This is a candle holder. It's really pretty, but it's just kind of been sitting on my shelf. It's not very functional, so I think I'm gonna put this in storage. And then I have my fruit bowl. <laughs> I think I'm gonna put this also on a place where I can see it very often when I'm sitting at my desk. Then this, this little basket of nail polish. Um, makes for a great book stand because it's so heavy but i reach for it quite often so it needs to be reachable basically cute little angel 
This one you've already seen, all my bookmarks. Um, I really like these two, they're just like little glass containers with flowers that I've dried and I think it just looks very whimsical and pretty. Um, some random drawing that I made once and a, a mirror that I never use. Hello. I think I can find a space for this. Behind the monitor, we have all of my young adult fantasy. Then above that, we have all of my adult fantasy and some sci-fi. Up here, we have my young adult sci-fis. And there we have miscellaneous other genres. So mostly just contemporary fiction and thrillers. Moving over here, we still have all of my non-fiction. Then down here we have my romance books and my classic literature. I put Frankenstein open because I had space. Whoa, I know, what a concept. And I really like this cover. I think it's beautiful. So I wanted to open it up. And then down here we have my TBR, the books I haven't read yet. I love it so much! It's so nice to finally have dual screens, I already tested them out. I can finally, I can finally play the Switch on a big screen, which honestly might be the part that's making me the most happy right now. Also, I'm loving the After the Last Airbender dual wallpaper. Great vibes. Anyway, um, that was my little bookshelf reorganization. If you enjoy listening to me blabble about books, you can subscribe to the channel because I blabble about books all the time. Also, your daily reminder to follow me on Twitter or Instagram if you want to. It's just at the book Leo. And with that, I just want really want to thank you for watching this video and spending all this time with me because I'm pretty sure this is going to be quite a long video. I hope you have an amazing day and I will see you soon in another video next week. Goodbye.